one of the most important things that you learn as a new player in rise of kingdoms is that not all legendary commanders are created equal and sometimes commanders are just so bad that even if you love their design and you love the historical figure you just cannot make them work in the open fields for rallies for garrisons they are just so bad that you would be at such a disadvantage using that commander that you just you, you can't do it and so today i'm gonna update you guys on who i think the eight worst legendary commanders are in rise of kingdoms and when i tell you these are the worst commanders in the game i mean it because edward of woodstock is historically a bad investment for players in rise of kingdoms but even he doesn't make this list even edward of woodstock is better than the commanders we're going to talk about today but first what's going on guys cheers by the way this is not my drink of choice if you guys have been watching the channel for the past couple of weeks you'll know that the blue monster shortage is still going on in my area somehow literally none of the stores have restocked it it's been like weeks maybe even a month at this point i've resorted to phase pop like literally phase clan the gaming group like that's that's their flavor and to be honest this actually was delicious but it's no blue monster so i'm really struggling and if you would be so kind during these trying times to drop a thumbs up on the video and consider subscribing that would really help out my mental health quite a bit as i go through this energy drink withdrawal anyway with all that out of the way let's jump right into the list and coming in at number eight oh man you thought i was gonna say margaret it's not it's not margaret but i just wanted to see if anyone would comment down below like oh my god oh New York ranged are so good. I can't believe it's not Margaret. Okay. I know Margaret's solid. Number eight on the list is Julius Caesar. Okay. He just makes the cut on the list. And honestly, if you had asked me like maybe two years ago or something like that, before the relic system came into the game, Julius Caesar would land much higher up on this list, but he actually has a decent relic unfortunately it isn't enough in my opinion to pull him off of this list now why is julius caesar one of the worst legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms well there's a couple of things that are working against him first of all his active skill when he's not expertise literally doesn't even have a damage factor and when he is expertise it's only a small 400. the good news with this active skill is that it's a very long buff five seconds is probably more than 50 percent of your rage cycle and this is a very powerful buff 20% attack, 20% defense, and 30% all damage is insane. But that's kind of where a lot of the good for Julius Caesar runs out because his second skill, 10% less damage taken, is okay. And the rest of this is a chance to occur with a long cooldown. Five seconds is pretty long and it's only under 60% units remaining. But really, if you're fighting in the open field and you fall below 60% units, you probably should be thinking about retreating soon anyway. So a majority of this skill doesn't get much value. The third skill is only for hitting cities. This is not for hitting a flag, fortress, or pass, or any other garrison. This is only for hitting cities, which is really unfortunate. So a lot of times you're just never gonna use this and it has a cooldown. And finally, the fourth skill, actually pretty good. 15% unit capacity is actually a very solid but vanilla skill. Unit capacity, if you guys didn't know, is how many troops you bring on the battlefield. And this directly impacts how much damage you're going to do, how much normal attack damage. So that's your basic attacks and your counter attacks. It also influences how much skill damage you're going to do. It influences your smite damage, anything, any sort of damage. Even the amount of healing that you get is going to depend on how many troops that you have. The more troops that you have, the more you can heal, the more that you might shield. So troop capacity, very good. Also very good for not just open field fighting, but things like Sunset Canyon, for example, or other various game modes but it is very vanilla okay troop capacity as a skill is not really the best thing but it is at least decent for julius caesar now the reason that he lands on number eight on this list and not something higher is because of his relic now he actually at the time of recording this has two relic upgrades available and it's really good 20 percent all damage and 20 percent march speed that literally makes julius caesar faster than a lot of the early game cavalry legendary commanders in the game like if we talk about minamoto only gets 10 percent march speed Cao Cao only gets 10 percent march speed saladin only gets five percent but a little bit more when you unlock his relic genghis khan only gets 15 percent march speed and then he loses some if he's attacked in fact even meta commanders like huo only get 15 percent march speed right and so 20 percent march speed on julius caesar is actually really good he's surprisingly fast in the open field especially when you put him with cavalry units but also 20 percent all damage is insane this means that for the five turns after his active skill he will have the 30 from the active skill and the 20 here so 50 percent all damage 
for those five seconds is actually wild so this is a very powerful relic but that just goes to show how bad julius caesar was before this relic like he was in one of the worst positions out of any legendary in the game which is shocking considering julius freaking caesar is like one of the most famous historical figures in the world and he's just utter garbage in this game which is super super sad now the other reason that he falls in that eighth slot is in the eighth place slot is because if you look at his skills besides the active skill there's no stats here he gets no attack no defense no health right which is a huge huge downside and he gets a very measly 400 damage factor so really there's just not enough damage coming out of him there's not enough tankiness on this march it, it really just is what it is the 20 percent all damage and 20 percent march speed on the relic is really what saved him and brought him this far up the list but even with that i think that he falls in at number eight now finally his attack tree not very good leadership tree not very good definitely all downsides I guess the only other good side though is that you do get Julius Caesar for free from the gold keys now maxing him is going to take probably five years but and that's not an exaggeration it will probably take five years but at least you get him for free over time right I mean I maxed him I think completely free I don't think I used a single universal on him oh yeah I got him so long ago that it doesn't even show my cost but yeah I, I haven't used universal on him so Julius Caesar coming at number eight moving on to number seven we have none other than and this is going to be a little bit surprising to some of you maybe maybe not everyone if you are familiar but uh, number seven Genghis Khan now here's the thing with Genghis Khan he's definitely got better talent trees than Julius Caesar right and yet he falls worse on this list right he's number seven why would he be worse than Julius Caesar well let's take a look here okay he has 1700 damage factor his expertise gives you a 30 percent chance to cast it again which is solid right off the bat he's hitting harder than Julius Caesar which is good but the rest of the kit is where this kind of falls apart okay just like Julius Caesar there's not a single stat point to be found on his kit there's no attack no defense no health and it's not even on the active skill as a buff so that's a huge downside now the other thing is his rage requirement is lower so it's 950 with this skill it makes it 850 so overall really good honestly rage regeneration rage engine here which is solid but he's slower than Julius Caesar and if he's hit with a basic attack he slows himself down now it, without stats this is a glass cannon right that's all he could possibly be is a glass cannon and the last thing that you want a glass cannon to do is have a debuff on himself that makes it harder for you to get away from unfavorable trades that's like the worst possible scenario furthermore his third skill only works when you have more than 70 percent of units remaining 30% all damage is nice but remember Julius Caesar gets 20% all the time no matter what and 30% for five seconds after his active skill so this is solid especially if you could like retreat under 70 then I guess you have this all the time but having to micromanage that is a shame and like losing this after under 70 is is wild like that's really bad and finally the fourth skill literally doesn't do anything unless he's under 50 percent which you definitely should retreat by then and you're going to get there really really fast because he's a glass cannon right now 30 percent skill damage is good but you have to realize that skill damage scales off of troops remaining so you're going to be hitting much weaker under 50 percent regardless and that makes that rage engine not that useful so his kit is he's very glass cannon there's a lot of drawbacks to his skills and then if we look at his relic there's really not much to love about the relic here either it's 10 percent defense and 100 extra skill damage so that brings it up to 1800 skill damage for his active skill he's gonna fire it pretty quickly which is why he lands on number seven here instead of lower on the list honestly and the other thing that saves him is again the talent trees and the fact that eventually he will get a second and third relic upgrade we know that to be true because the there are already second and third upgrades for other commanders here in the uh, in the museum right and even if you look at commanders that came out at the same time or around the same generation as Khan they already have a second tier upgrade so we know Khan will get a second tier upgrade and I think you know because he's consistently ranked as one of the worst commanders in the game I hope that his second relic upgrade more than doubles these things right because if they bring this from 10 to 20 and 100 to 200 it's not going to move the needle at all if they want to change anything for Genghis Khan they got to bump this from 10 to 30 and from 100 to 300 and then maybe we'll talk talk possibly but even then I don't think people will really use him however because of the potential of this second relic upgrade he doesn't land lower on the list it's also worth noting that Genghis Khan is also historically a super famous commander in history right 
so like we are two for two with like having the most famous commanders in history just be absolute garbage in rise of kingdoms which is such a shame but anyway moving on to number six on the list we have Ragnar Lodbrok which is such a shame again because he's so badass as a historical Viking he's one of the most famous Vikings in history and yet in rise of kingdoms he is horrible and as a matter of fact if you look at his kit I've often referred to Ragnar as sort of just a clone of Julius Caesar but in this case I'm putting him slightly lower on the list and why is that well first of all let me just be clear depending on what you do with these commanders you could probably rearrange the bottom three on this list right so Ragnar Caesar and Genghis Khan if you want to make an argument that they should be in a different order I could I could hear you out on that I bet you you could come up with a good argument for that I think all three of these are kind of neck and neck but I put Ragnar as worse than the other two because first of all he has again the same talent trees as Julius Caesar which are historically not very good talent trees his active skill is very similar to Caesar's as a matter of fact it might be even slightly better because taking 20 percent less damage for five seconds is very good but then when we move on to his other skills I would say they're a little bit worse here we get 20 percent attack which at least we're seeing some stats on this kit by the way we haven't seen stats yet for any of the other commanders I mean obviously we saw a little bit of defense on the relic for Khan but here at least we see attack on the vanilla kit but the rest of the kit isn't very good like here you are reducing healing which at the time of recording this is pretty much irrelevant I guess this is relevant in kvk1 but besides that it's not relevant at all now I will say with mighty healing coming into the game at in full force with these new archers it's possible that Ragnar gets you know maybe a little bit more play or something I'm not really sure I doubt it but this skill in general nice stats here I guess it's attack but it's okay but the rest of the skill is kind of useless third skill only more damage when attacking a city again useless for hitting any other stronghold in the game flags for just passes whatever this doesn't do anything and then unlike Caesar who gets 15 percent troop capacity Ragnar only gets 10 percent troop capacity and then 10 percent rallied army capacity which in my opinion is not as versatile right it's it's only for a single type of attack I would much rather have 15 percent troop capacity so with that being said let's take a look at his relic here and see how that compares to Julius Caesar and what we'll find is that I think his relic is a little bit worse now he gets 35 percent defense that's solid and 15% normal damage taken reduction also solid but you have to consider would you rather have this or would you rather have 20% all damage and 20% March speed it really depends right now it, it's worth noting that Ragnar has more stats than Julius Caesar for sure Julius Caesar only gets stats from the five second buff on his active skill but his damage taken reduction is lower but it is all the time and he brings more troops to the battlefield and he has 20% March speed which is insane so even if you look at Ragnar's kit and you want to make the argument that he has more stats and he gets almost as much all damage and the 20 less damage taken is great I could I could agree with you on that but he's going to be so slow out in the open field that it's just it's impractical right like on paper it looks like he would be better but in practice because he's so slow you're just always going to be trapped in those unfavorable matchups so really again I would say Ragnar Khan and Caesar on this list you could interchange them because they're all just so bad bad in their own unique way but I personally think Ragnar is a little bit worse because he is actually just slower than the other commanders that we've talked about in this video even though he does have more stats than them and he's close at least to Caesar in other regards it's also worth noting that he doesn't have a damage factor here right Caesar hits at least for 400 every skill cycle you don't get that at all here from Ragnar which is unfortunate moving on to number five on the list we have none other than Frederick now Frederick is another gold key commander and you'll notice that he has very similar traits as other commanders we talked about in this video Frederick is a leadership and conquering commander and he does have the skill tree which I think historically is better than the attack tree on the other commanders that we've seen before but his kit is just it's just not as good as I would want it to be the thing about Frederick okay is that unless he's expertise which most of you watching are not going to have an expertise Frederick by the way it's again going to take you five years no exaggeration to do it free to play completely at least but unless he's expertise his active skill might miss dealing damage right you have an 80 percent chance of 800 damage factor for three seconds so at best you're dealing 2400 damage factor which is actually pretty good 
and on average when he's not expertise this is about a 1900 damage factor which is still solid 1920 to be exact so even if we're just looking at the average from an unexpertise version of frederick it's still dealing more than like let's say genghis khan who is 1800 flat with his relic bonus right so still better than that but the problem is this is damage over time right so it, it's the next three seconds so it ticks each turn which historically is worse than just one big burst of damage because you might miss some of those hits at the enemy runs away and then the rest of the kit is just a little bit weak like if we look here a 10 percent chance for a thousand healing factor this is honestly good in some circumstances but none that really come to mind from a pvp perspective right this is good for example when you're chaining barbarians or when you're doing like golden kingdom or sunset canyon or something like that where the, you know healing is very very valuable but in the end game late game pvp a random thousand healing factor proc with a long cooldown that's not really going to move the needle at all the third skill more damage when hitting cities again only cities not flags forts or passes and then the fourth skill similar to caesar actually solid with 15 percent troop capacity as a skill relatively weak but at least better than i would argue ragnar's fourth skill and even better than genghis khan's fourth skill because at least this does something all the time and it scales with everything else in the game so really the star of the show is his active skill it does a lot of single target damage but it's damage over time and then the rest of the kit is a little bit weak right unless again you're doing like pve content if we take a look however at his relic his relic, I would argue, does not rival that of the other commanders that fall in the same category, being Caesar and Ragnar. Here we see 40% attack and 15% skill damage taken reduction. Now, here's the thing. If you'll recall, his kit has no stats, right? So unlike Ragnar, he has literally no stats. And the stats he does get from this relic is troop attack, which is fine because he's dealing a lot of damage on that active skill but the thing about this is like he's a glass cannon right he's got a little bit of healing and that's it he has no tanky stats at all taking 15 percent less skill damage is nice but i mean when you have no health and no defense you're still gonna get wrecked i don't think this is nearly enough and this is you know as we move away from skill damage which you know if you guys didn't realize by now like we've moved towards smite damage for infantry they've announced true damage for archers with mighty healing and they've also revealed that combo attacks are probably going to get the spotlight very soon i predict it's going to be for either cavalry or maybe even the next ranged commanders or the next leadership commanders possibly and so as like the meta moving forward in the next year or two strays a little bit away from skill damage this is going to be less and less relevant anyway and so compared to the relic for caesar and compared to the relic for ragnar this relic is just worse it's just worse and so that overall gives us a commander that you know has one thing that he does well lots of single target damage but the rest of his kit is just so bad that he's kind of doomed to never be used now I will argue that he's very good in the earlier kvks because his damage output is unrivaled like there's literally nothing better really like in kvk1 like what hits for 2400 in kvk1 I don't think anything but again it's damage over time so honestly Frederick lands at number five on this list here I think he's honestly I've used him for killing barbs I think he's great for killing barbs because it's a lot of single target damage he gives a solid healing factor to whoever he's with and he brings more troops so you can stay out killing barbs for longer but for PVP, he's trash. Moving on to number four on this list is Hannibal Barca. Now, you know that the rest of the list after this is going to be utter trash if Barca is only number four on the list. So that I'm telling you, there are three commanders worse than Barca. That's what I'm telling you right now. But Hannibal Barca is again in the same bucket as a lot of the commanders we've talked about here in this video. He is a leadership conquering attack commander. That is just historically not a good combination. Okay. But the rest of his kit is also really bad. Okay. It's really bad. We look at the active skill, okay? And let's just look at the expertise version because he is a VIP commander. And if you're gonna buy him, you're probably gonna expertise him, okay? 400 damage factor, just like Julius Caesar. Three target AOE, fan shaped 300, and a really powerful debuff, I will be honest. 25% less damage and 25% leads defense for five seconds. But just like all the other commanders in this category, the rest of his kit's not very good. Second skill, let's say you always use it with mixed troops okay which no one's running mixed troops in the open field these days but let's say you are you get 10 percent all damage okay well who would you pair him with in the open field that uses mixed troops i mean i guess for kbk1 you're going to be using mixed troops but everything after that you're not unless it's a trajan and does anyone run trajan barca no maybe like ethel fled barca something like that and if you don't 
run him with mixed troops he this doesn't do anything okay third skill again only hitting a city and it's a healing factor it's not even like anything crazy it's only for hitting a city and then the fourth skill gives you 10 percent troop capacity which is not as good as things like julius caesar or frederick's fourth skill however he does have a nice little change here whenever you use an active skill you get 15 percent bonus damage for three seconds that's actually pretty good but let's take a look at his relic here for a second just to get the full picture let's go ahead and take a look at hannibal barca and we'll see with this double relic upgrade 40 percent attack and 10% less normal damage taken. So this is very similar to the Frederick relic. It just doesn't move the needle, right? It just doesn't move the needle. It's the same amount of universal attack, but it reduces normal damage, which I mean, I, it depends on what, how you look at it. If that's better or not, than the skill damage taken reduction, but either way, we don't want 40% attack because if you look at the rest of his kit, again, there's nothing on his kit. There's nothing here in terms of stats. There's no attack. There's no defense. There's no health. There's none of that. And I just feel like he's not dealing enough damage to really get use out of that 40% attack anyway. Like it just, what, what we gonna do here this little damage factor on the on the expertise active skill like no but even if you wanted to say like okay omni the debuffs are actually really solid here and it is aoe so like you kind of have to add all that up in terms of damage output and like the bonus damage here is actually really good and you can make that argument and sure if you want to look at it from that perspective and you want to say because of that because of the debuffs and everything he's better than caesar or frederick or anything like that i could agree with you however and here's the thing that that's the worst part about Barca. You have to pay for Barca. You have to spend money for him. You literally cannot get him expertise without spending money. It is like literally hundreds of dollars to expertise Barca. Okay. And so whereas Frederick and Julius Caesar and Ragnar are all on the same level of garbage, you actually just get them for free over time by playing the game. And again, it takes five years, but at least you will get them and can use them and can unlock their relics and do things with them. Barca is on the same level. And again, you might be able to argue that he's a little bit better than them, but you have to spend money on him as he's hundreds of dollars. Okay. And for that reason alone, I'm putting him worse on the list than the rest of them, because I have I can't even use Barca. I can't even use him. And I've been playing the game for six years. So to have a commander on the same caliber as those commanders that are just awful and then have to spend hundreds of dollars on him. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He lands at number four on the list. Moving on to number three on the list. We have Charlemagne again, a leadership conquering commander. Like what is going on here? I think Lilith needs to realize that leadership commanders are garbage i want to see some really good leadership commanders come into the game that's what i want to see because i mean this list we are basically just making a list of leadership commanders at this point besides genghis khan which let me just be honest here the fact that khan made the list and he's not leadership is really embarrassing but anyway here's the thing about charlemagne okay he's supposed to be the reward that you get for winning kvk1 like that is supposedly or at least that's how you get him originally you participate in kvk1 and there you go after that you can get him on the wheel of fortune but why would you let's look at his skills here 1400 damage factor literally worse than Khan okay nothing else here it's also worth noting that this is worse than Frederick's damage factor as well second skill gives you a 1000 damage factor shield when you're hit with a basic attack so okay that means that this is never going to proc if someone's not targeting you right like if you are hitting someone and they're not hitting you back you'll never get this that's crazy also it's just a shielding factor like it's a decent size shield but the trade-off is you have to be getting hit to get it like that's not a good trade-off in my opinion whereas if you look at somebody like frederick for example he gets his healing factor whenever he launches a basic attack so if you're hitting somebody that isn't hitting you back you still at least will get this once in a while and also healing i think is better in terms of like pve content for example like chaining i'd rather heal than shield but moving on to the third skill if you're leading a rally you gain 10 percent attack and defense so okay at least we get something for hitting flags fortresses and passes that's great but it's 20 percent of stats you should just have this you should have more than this on your kit by default but okay and then the fourth skill gives you a bonus of skill damage depending on how many troops you lose and it's even higher if you're hitting a city but again this falls in the same bucket as khan's fourth skill where the skill damage bonus isn't nearly as valuable because you've already lost a bunch of troops and also when are you hitting cities not that often right now the expertise is very interesting here you get 10 percent of your dead units converted to sev wounds and sent to the hospital instead of dying which has value 
but like you're going to be trading so bad against a city which again this is only hurting a city by the way you're going to be trading so badly against that city that you're probably going to take more deads anyway than if you had used somebody actually better and then we look at his relic he gets 50 percent attack and 500 skill damage so okay this bumps his active skill up to 1900 which is okay and it gives him stats at least he didn't have stats before this unless he was rallying a city but again it's attack and so like I mean I, I don't know this just it just seems so bad it just seems so bad I don't understand what you're supposed to do with Charlemagne you can't really use him in the field although I guess with that relic you can try but like this is your reward for winning kvk1 like this just steaming pile of who like that's literally what this is I, I mean like the only redeeming thing here is that his relic gives him a ton of attack and a 1900 damage factor the rest of the kit is garbage this is all trash here like this is okay but the rest is garbage he basically only has an active skill like Charlemagne is basically a one skill commander that's kind of how I see it here with 50 percent attack like okay I don't know Charlemagne is is garbage and even if you could make the argument that he's better than let's say Julius Caesar or you know Frederick or Ragnar Lodbrok you might be able to make that argument if you really wanted to if you really wanted to stretch it because of his 50 percent attack and the higher skill damage but then you have to ask yourself how do you get Charlemagne first of all maybe you unlock him by winning kvk1 but you get more sculptures of him from either spinning the wheel of fortune or by using universal sculptures so in a world where Frederick Caesar and Ragnar are all obtained for free over time with your gold keys this commander is not this commander has to be upgraded either by using gems on the wheel of fortune or by universal legendary commander sculptures so in a world where he is arguably on the same level if not worse you don't get him for free over time he just is garbage forever which is super super sad he's so much more expensive to upgrade than the other commanders on this list from a gem or sculpture value perspective obviously Barca is literally more expensive because he costs actual dollars but I would argue that Charlemagne is as bad or worse than them and to demand gems or universals is insane moving on to number two on the list is honestly surprising I, I didn't think that like they would be this high up on the list but it's gonna be Wu Zetian it's crazy because Wu Zetian back in the day was part of the garrison meta like people would actually use Wu Zetian as part of the garrison meta so to have her as the number two worst commander in the entire game right now in my opinion is shocking here's the thing about Wu she is another leadership commander by the way but if you look at the rest of her kit it's extremely lackluster a thousand damage factor i think like sure that's higher than caesar and like ragnar for example but at least they have really strong buffs there this gives you a 500 healing factor kind of pathetic second skill 10 percent damage when you're in a garrison and 10 percent damage against rallied armies okay so nothing in the field here we get 10 percent defense 10 percent health and when you're hit with the basic attack you have a chance to silence them which is kind of cool but the thing about this is that if you miss the timing with this like unlike guan yu right where guan yu you could kind of time the silence in some way sometimes like with sunset candy for example you could try to like launch your active skill first and then you're constantly timing that silence with the enemy's active skill here it's random and there's a cooldown and it's only two seconds so it's much worse than you would actually think fourth skill again only for garrisons and it's 15 percent less skill damage and when you take skill damage you get 20 percent defense for three seconds and it's a 50 percent chance of occurring it's not even guaranteed right so really this is kind of like on average 10 percent defense really really bad stuff here fourth skill 20 percent more counterattack damage most commanders aren't relying on counterattack damage these days and when you're here with the base attack you have a 10 percent chance to deal 500 damage but it's got a long cooldown but probably the most insulting part about Uzitian is that she only has a single relic upgrade and it's actual garbage 15 percent attack and five percent skill damage five where do we get only five How, is the rest of her kit so good that she only gets five no it's actually quite bad and so in a world where the other commanders on this list you know you could at least get some use out of right like I said Freddy is decent for killing barbs and like you get March speed from Caesar so it's like universal you could put it behind anybody like if you really wanted to stretch it you could find uses for some of the other commanders on this list here but Wu Zetian is like just as bad as those commanders if not worse and her relic is bad and there's only one upgrade for it and even if her second upgrade comes out and it's double what it, the current one is that means she gets what 30 percent attack and 10 percent skill damage even that would be trash right so all in all she has as many bad traits as the rest of the list here but to make things even worse she falls into the same bucket 
as our friend Charlemagne in that you unlock her from season two of KVK and then you get her from the mightiest governor hello in what world would she be worth fighting a mightiest governor for that's even worse than needing to do well on the wheel of fortune because here you're competing with other players you might have to actually spend money to win this event and oftentimes you do actual garbage and then on top of that using universal sculptures for her is just insane so she is just as bad if not worse to upgrade than charlemagne with a kit that is arguably as bad or worse with a terrible relic it's a shame how far wuzetian has fallen but here we are she in my opinion is the second worst commander in the entire game right now which brings us to number one on the list and you already knew it it's lubu and here's the thing about lubu he is a promotional legendary that you cannot get anymore unless they bring back another dynasty warriors promotion it is impossible to get lubu in rise of kingdoms and not only that because he is unobtainable they actually didn't even give him a relic okay there's no relic for lubu in the game even though he is literally on par with the rest of the trash we've talked about in this video he has some of the same drawbacks he's a leadership conquering commander okay which means seven of the eight commanders on this list by the way are leadership commanders his damage factor is an aoe but it's like literally worse than the aoe from sun tzu by the way because this is three targets whereas sun tzu hits more than that he's five targets with a total of a thousand damage factor and also lubu's skill is reduced by 15 percent for each additional target which sun tzu's is not now he does have a a really powerful three second defense reduction but that's where the benefits end he gets a bonus when hitting a city so again not for other strongholds his third skill gives him a measly 15 percent attack and a 10 percent chance for a little bit extra attack but again awful 10 percent troop capacity not as good as the 15 we see on on frederick or on caesar by the way and he gets that rally bonus and the expertise bumps his active skill up to a 1000 damage factor and a 50 percent troop defense reduction all in all trash no relic nothing to save him and he can't even be obtained anymore he is locked frozen in time as in my opinion the worst legendary commander in rise of kingdoms and there's nothing you can really do about it and it probably will never change which is so sad because Lu Bu is again another super famous historical chinese commander in history and he just is doomed to suck forever in rise of kingdoms which i don't know to me that is a shame now the last thing that i want to mention here in this video is a few honorable mentions and you probably we were thinking this throughout the entire video where's Moctezuma right and the reason that I didn't put Moctezuma on this list is because he's literally not built for PvP like he is made for PvE exclusively and you I guess you can make that argument for like the conquering commanders and for the garrison commanders and all that other stuff but like you can use conquering and garrison commanders in the field all the time I mean if we look at a commander like Yi Song Ye as a garrison commander historically we've used Harold as a conquering commander he was fine Ahmed's a conquering commander you can use him in the field even Gorgo she's a garrison commander you can use her in the field we look at Nebu and by extension Ashurbanipal both of them are conquering commanders you can use them in the field same thing with Tark conquering use them in the field same thing with Saladin you used to be able to use them in the field so like there are plenty of commanders in the game that are either garrison or conquering commanders that you can use in the field but really when it comes to peacekeeping there's really none like yes ethel flight on the early game sure you can make that argument and i guess you have like Cao Cao and you have minamoto again early game commanders that you can use in the field but i would say for the most part peacekeeping commanders are like kind of in their own niche where they're just made for pve and so i just it didn't seem fair to me to compare moctezuma to the others because where we do have some peacekeepers that are open field commanders like minamoto and Cao Cao, they literally came out like six years ago okay and ethel flood came out in like what five and a half years ago something like that but when it comes to conquering and garrison we saw like conquering and garrison commanders viable in the most recent releases right so i just don't think it's apples to apples i don't think it's fair to compare peacekeeping commanders to even rally and garrison commanders because they're just so bad because they're just not made for pvp and by that same logic i did not include any of the gathering commanders because yes these are historically some of the worst commanders in the game when it comes to pvp but again they are just not they're just not meant for it they are just literally built to gather and so it just didn't feel right to make you know like th these three commanders of course would be on the list of course they would be on the top list and so it just felt like a waste of time to include them but let me know what you guys think about the rest of the list here in this video how do you feel about the commanders that we've discussed today do you think 
that these commanders deserve to be on this list do you think Suleiman deserves to be on this list as well and again leadership conquering attack right like actually awful he's I guess you could say he's an honorable mention he almost made the cut here but let me know what you think in the comment section below if you disagree let me know who you think are the worst commanders in the game and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace